Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Today we are going to talk about the Red Sound Darkstar Synthesizer. It was released in the year 1999 and, fun fact, it bears the same name as one of my all-time favorite science fiction movies. The Dark Star is one of those synthesizers that was still produced in large quantities in the EU. At least it was EU back then. Originally sold for 420 euros, they had to reduce the price pretty soon. A fate quite similar to that of the M Audio Venom. I really wanted to have one back then, but I was too broke even for the, at that time unheard of, price of 160 euros. Funnily enough, this is exactly what I paid for the one I recently bought. At the first glance, the Dark Star seems to tick all the boxes. 8 virtual analog voices, plenty of hands-on controls, a well-structured layout and, I didn't think that I would ever say that about any product, the user manual is really helpful. It goes without saying that every device with a joystick is cool. The first obvious downer are the RCA connectors, one of the issues Red Sound addressed in the XP2 version of the Darkstar. As far as I know, they implemented the chorus as well. One of the more unique features of the Dark Star is the easily accessible main APROM of the unit. Aside from the obvious synth engine, Red Sound produced a Bokoda chip too. Big shoutout to the seller as he included one of those free of charge. I received the Dark Star only a few days ago, so I didn't have the time to cover the Vokoda. There will be a dedicated episode about it. Sounds like a nice and versatile machine to me. So, why are there so many people who openly hate the Dark Star, like it ripped off the concept of a Stanley Kubrick film and turned it into a low-budget B-movie with a synthesizer soundtrack that was produced within four hours? You've already heard the Dark Star in our little intro tune. Far from analog sounding, but I like the quirky and squelchy tones. For some retro flair, our British lady will be accompanied by a very German rhythm section, a Yomax M bass and an equally quirky and squelchy Manfred Fricke Berlin 501 drum machine from 1980. Certainly not a moog, but that's not always a bad thing. The multi-timbrality of the Darkstar is cool, but I had a hard time to get the volume and frequency balance right. Fortunately, the internal mixer can be used to route parts to dedicated outputs via the pan pot. Ideal for some good old stomp box abuse. Now we're talking. The Dark Star itself can be used as an effects unit as well. Let's go almost full circle with the joystick and let the ring modulator shine while mangling the pristine sound of a digitact. Verdict. The Red Sound Dark Star is like, you guessed it, an old B-movie. It doesn't have the professional sheen of a Hollywood blockbuster and there are a lot of awkward things about it, but it's fun and I really like the patina of its time period. As the nostalgic that I am, I would recommend using the Dark Star for cheesy sound design and for all kinds of strange electronic music. Thanks for watching, see you next time.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to tell me in the comment section what other kind of bad gear you would like to see and hear on the show. Oh,